So we're right on the edge of Christmas, and uh, news is coming in, though, in the world of boxing. Kevin Ioli is with us, our uh, lead boxing analyst with Yahoo. They made the fight. Not a big shocker. Shane Mosley and Manny Pacquiao going at it. Uh, not a big shocker, but there's a lot of anger, anger out there right now. I don't know if the response you're getting is positive. I know the response I've heard on radio and uh, on the blogosphere, not good. Not good. I, I, I mean, it's about uh, four to one against this fight. Uh, Shane Mosley against Manny Pacquiao. People are upset. Um, and I, I think it's going to show in the pay-per-view results. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be as good as what they think. I, I, I wish they would have picked Juan Manuel Marquez. I think it w they've had two sensational fights. Uh, they're both in the top five pound for pound. Manny Pacquiao, obviously, uh, number one. Um, you know, Marquez seems to have had the style of uh, Manny Pacquiao figured out and maybe the only guy to do that. To me, that would have been the fight to put on to make. Um, secondarily, since, you know, we got this whole Golden Boy top rank feud that uh, gets into things, you know, Andre Berto sitting there, an undefeated uh, welterweight champion with speed, with power. You know, a guy that really, you know, in top rank's defense, Berto hasn't beaten a top level well known guy yet. So you might say, well, what has he done to deserve a fight against Pacquiao? You know, that's a, a legitimate argument. I can understand that. But I think most people understand that Berto has a skill. And when you see him in there, when you project, it's going to put on a good fight. I mean, mm -hmm. I think he's going, to, he's going to force Manny Pacquiao to be better. Um, and that's what we want. I mean, ultimately, this is entertainment, and, and it's about the customers and the people buying, and we want to give them the best possible product. When you're at a restaurant, you know, you don't go and uh, if you're going to sell a $12 hamburger, you go to McDonald's and buy it. You know, you try to give them the best burger that you can give them. Well, in boxing, if you're going to put on the fight, you want to give them the best product. And I think it only helps, uh, you know, repeat business. But unfortunately, you know, I don't say this dissing Shane Mosley. Shane Mosley is one of the best of this era, but he's 40 years old, and we've seen a, a decline in his game. Um, I, really disappointing that this fight was, uh, was put together. Well, I remember sitting there about uh, a month ago, and uh, both Ludabella uh, with Berto was at a press conference along with uh, Richard Schaefer and his guy, Juan Manuel Marquez, and that, without even knowing what was going to happen, I think they sort of knew, but without even knowing the final conclusion, they were ready to rip someone's head off. So I, can, I cannot imagine what those two guys are like uh, today and yesterday. Lou DiBella, the Mount Vesuvius of boxing, uh, you know, of course, is, is erupted. I mean, uh, you know, Lou uh, just went off the deep end. Uh, but, you know, rightly so. Um, you know, and even DiBella admits the right fight to make was, was Marquez. Um, you know, but DiBella said, hey, if you couldn't get the fight done, my guy's here. My guy's ready for this fight. He's ready to step up to the next level. And even though in Berto's last fight, he didn't fight a very tough opponent, Freddie Hernandez, he was challenged, hey, let's see you do something to make a statement. And he went out there and had a dramatic knockout, uh, really went for it, had a dramatic early knockout. You know, uh, I think that uh, both Schaefer and DeBella have a right to be angry, as do the fans. Absolutely. So it is going to be mostly and Pacquiao, the guy who's put this together is Bob Arum. Now, if you know, if I tell Bob face to face, I don't like the fight. Might get ugly. Uh, he likes you, but you, you know, you ripped it, and you're going to continue to rip it. So, what's Bob's reaction to someone like Kevin Ioli, who's a pretty respected? Really respected boxing writer, uh, ripping his <laughs> oh, it fight. Depends on who we're talking about. <laughs> well, I had a conversation with Bob yesterday, and he disagrees with me, but he understands. You know, it's not a personal thing, and I think that that's what it's about. It's just about hey, I am advocating for what I believe is best uh, for the public and best for the sport of boxing, um, and and. I understand Bob, Bob makes a couple points that I understand because I understand the pay-per-view industry. And sometimes the people in boxing, the fans, don't understand how pay-per-view works. And, and Bob is right when he says that it's really the casual fans, the fan who maybe watches one or two fights a year who determine the success or failure of a pay-per-view. Because all of us who are, the, who are the hardcore fans, you know, the ones who tape ESPN2's Friday Night Fights and, and watch Showbox, you know, I have on my DVR, I have Showbox set to automatically record. I have HBO Fights set to automatically record. I have ESPN2 set to automatically record. I have HBO set to automatically record. So I have all all these fights coming on and, and when I, I watch the top rank live fights in Spanish so I'm not the guy that they have to worry about selling you can now and then tunes in if they happen to hear of a, a big name fighter that's the person who really sells the pay-per-view so I understand where Aaron was coming from but I think in this case here's where my argument with Bob is 
1.4 million people bought Mayweather Mosley on pay-per-view, and they saw Mosley kind of lay an egg. They saw Mosley not look very good against Floyd Mayweather Jr. And if we're saying that Pacquiao and Mayweather are the numbers one and two in the world pound for pound, and I personally have Pacquiao one, Mayweather two, how do we expect it to be any different against uh, against uh, Manny Pacquiao? You know, Shane is not getting younger. He's going to be only four months shy of his 40th birthday at that point. And I understand Styles make fights, but I just think that Shane has lost enough off his fastball at this stage that he's not the same fighter. So the argument that Bob makes doesn't carry water only because Shane is a diminished fighter. And I'll tell you, the big challenge, they get me every time with the 24-7. What's the hook this time? They can't get me. I know they can't. Well, you know what I think they're going to do on the 24-7 this time is they're going to play up the discontent. discontent. Um, I think they're going to talk to Shane Mosley about, hey, are you an old man? And they're going to talk to uh, Nazim Richardson about that. They're going to talk to fans. We're, we're going to, you know, just like we saw in 24-7 on the Pacquiao-Margarito fight where they very head on and maybe to some people said overkill when talked about the hand wrap issue with Margarito. They're going to do the same thing with Shane Mosley, and they're going to, you know, discuss, uh, you know, how there's a lot of animosity toward the fight, and people didn't think he should have gotten the fight. And I think that's what it's going to be the angle, and it's going to be, you know, Shane Mosley. You know what? I, I'm going to prove all you doubters wrong. All right, Kev. Nice job. Thank you, Steve.